Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Rochel, and we're here for another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we break down some of the latest poultry research for you uh, in the area of nutrition in under uh, 10 minutes. Uh, today, I'm very excited to um, bring to you a new guest, uh, Emanuele Goes, uh, a PhD candidate out of Canada, uh, originally from Brazil. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, Sam. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. And also thank you for the opportunity uh, to share a little bit more about my research here in this podcast. You bet. Yeah. No, thank you for joining and, and we look forward to it. Uh, before we get started into the research, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, background and how you ended up in Canada? Yeah, sure. So as you said, I'm from Brazil and uh, I did my undergrad in animal science at the Federal University of Paraná State in Brazil. Uh, still during my undergrad, I had the opportunity to do a short internship at North Carolina State University, uh, where I learned and worked with an overfeeding technique. And uh, after this internship, I returned to Brazil to do my master's degree uh, that was also focused on in overfeeding and intentional development of broiler embryos. And uh, after this first experience abroad at North Carolina State University, uh, I decided to do my, my PhD abroad to continue my studies in another country. And it happened to work out with Dr. Corver here at the University of Alberta in Canada. So I'm currently in the last year of my PhD defending some, so fingers crossed. Yeah. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Yeah, no, very good and, and good luck and I'm sure it'll go well. And uh, I think it's great you had the opportunity to work with Dr. Corver. He's one of the ones, you know, I know a, a, a Clasing student who's been working in the area of nutrition and health and immunology for for yeah. many years. Yeah, he's a great professional and also a good friend as well. <laughs> Certainly, no, that that's great. So you started in in ovo feeding, and now you're working uh, more in intestinal health. Can you tell us uh, more specifically about what you're working on now? Yeah, sure. So my research is focused on evaluating the potential antibiotic growth promoters replacements in broiler diets with a specific focus on gut health. So we are testing the efficacy of some products in preventing or mitigating the subclinical necrotic enteritis in broilers. And just to put everyone on the same page, I want to briefly explain what is the necrotic enteritis. So the necrotic enteritis is uh, an enteric disease caused by the overgrowth of Clostridium perfringens, that is an opportunistic bacteria that can cause lesions or the necrosis of the intestinal tissue. And uh, the clinical form of this disease is responsible for sudden increases in mortality, while the subclinical form can cause losses in performance. Uh, due to the reduction of nutrient absorption caused by some focal lesions in the intestinal tissue. So in my research, we are particularly interested in the subclinical form of this disease because it's the one that is most common in the field is silent and because it's silent is not treated and can cause huge economic losses for the, for the poultry industry. So uh, we are evaluating three different products in three different projects. They have different mechanisms of action uh, in order to test the, their potential to prevent or mitigate the necrotic enteritis in broilers. Uh, the first product that we have been studied is the chitose and oligosaccharides. Uh, the chitose and oligosaccharides, they are natural positively charged polysaccharides. And they seem to have uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, antimicrobial, and prebiotic properties, depending on its molecular weight. Um, the second product that we are studying is the glucosamine-derived caramels. So we use the glucosamine, um, that is an amino sugar, and we applied a thermal process on glucosamine. And as a result of this uh, caramelization of the glucosamine, we have uh, we can create new compounds, and these new compounds are known as uh, fructosazine, deoxyfructosazine, and galanoidins. The fructosazine and deoxyfructosazines they have seems to have a strong anti-inflammatory properties, while the melanoidins seems to have more prebiotic properties. 
And the third product that we are studying, the last but not least, is the punicic acid. Punicic acid is an unusual polysaturated fatty acid, it is an omega-5. Uh, it's found mainly in the pomegranate seed oil. And uh, punicic acid seems to have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. So we use the, the pomegranate seed oil, we apply uh, this oil and the diets of the burners to see the effects uh, on burners. Um, but to pass the potential of this product to, to mitigate or uh, prevent necrotic enteritis in broilers, we had to induce necrotic enteritis in our birds. And um, in order to do that, we applied a novel subclinical necrotic enteritis challenge model that uh, we developed here at the University of Alberta. And uh, we recently published a paper vali validating this uh, natural approach. So if uh, you guys are interested to, to know a little bit more about this challenge model, you can find it in the Frontiers in Physiology. Uh, we published it last year. It's a very interesting study. And um, briefly, this challenge model is based on uh, the exposure of the birds to predisposing factors that can cause the necrotic enteritis. But it's also based on a natural procedure perfringens uptake or a natural procedure perfringens infection. Uh, so some research has shown that uh, the, the necrotic enteritis is only caused in presence of predisposing factors. And then those predisposing factors can be anything that can cause physical intestinal damage or that can cause intestinal dysbiosis. And um, with this intestinal dysbiosis, we are creating the ideal conditions for the Clostridium perfringens proliferation. So Clostridium perfringens is an opportunistic bacteria. They are there. They're just waiting for the ideal moment to proliferate. So because of that, we, we create those, uh, we have to create those predisposing factors in order for the necrotic enteritis to occur. In, in our challenge model, we selected two main predisposing factors. Uh, the first predisposing factor, we apply high dosages of the coccidiosis vaccine, and we applied by Gavage to all birds at 12 age. And uh, this first predisposing factor, uh, the main purpose of this, this first predisposing factor was to cause an initial uh, intestinal dysbiosis and also cause uh, mild lesions in the gut tissue, then serve, serving as an entry point for the, the procedure performance proliferation. And the second predisposing factor, some days later of the application of the, the coccygeos vaccine, we remove the feed for 24 hours from all birds as well. And this second predisposing factor serves to cause any stress for the birds and also to enhance, uh, to enhance the intestinal, uh, to enhance this disruption in the microbiota and uh, facilitating the conditions for the natural proliferation and establishment of the Clostridium perfringens in the gut environment. And since the Clostridium perfringens is ubiquitous, so they are everywhere, uh, instead of providing cultures of Clostridium perfringens for the birds, we expect them to have a natural uptake, a natural infection with the Clostridium perfringens strains that we have in our bar environment. So in the feed, in the litter, personnel, in the water, and so on. And um, the main purpose of this natural approach was to mimic the field conditions as closer as possible. So it's been very nice to, to, to work with this challenge model, not only to evaluate those products, but also uh, to, to, to apply this new challenge model that is a, a natural approach. And it's been very nice to uh, modify it, uh, edit, conforming the output of the, the several studies that we have run so far. So yeah, I look forward to to defend my thesis and yeah. I'll yeah. Great. Now that's very interesting. I, I I really like your model. Elevate bird well-being and improve profitability with Cargill's tailored nutrient solutions that deliver performance. Cargill is leading through applied nutrition, leveraging deep nutrient insights and understanding of the animal's nutrient requirements to achieve your production and performance goals. 
Yes, that is fascinating, and I'm left with a number of uh, follow-up thoughts. However, our time is running short here today, uh, but if you, our audience, are intrigued uh, like I am and want to uh, continue the conversation with Emanuele on this, uh, please join us in our next episode as, as we'll dive deeper uh, into these uh, models that she has been working with. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.